Our decimeters are mostly in the green. John Pearson's edged into the amber. Uh, cameras had a tough time, and seven computers shut down. Even with the hatches down, it felt a little too close for comfort in here. But well, what a sight. We saw rivers of plasma beneath the photosphere, and we got an outstanding view of the magnetic loop fields on x-ray. It was incredible. We also detected some sunquakes, I guess, triggered by that flare to the west. We're all very glad to have missed that little piece of weather. Magnetic field generator offline. Centrifuge is online. Point two. Point five. Volgene. The sun has accelerated Pegasus toward Jupiter, the biggest planet in the solar system, seven months and 470 million miles away. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear John. Shortly after celebrating another birthday on Pegasus, John Pearson becomes concerned about a rash on his skin. I thought it was just a shaving rash, but it's been around for, what, two weeks? Eczema. Before reaching Jupiter, Pegasus has to run the gauntlet of the asteroid belt. This 50 million mile thick band of debris stretches for 174 million miles. It contains over a million rocks. Most are uncharted and any one of them could end the mission. Fifty-five minutes. Do we need a correction? Ivan's running the numbers. What did Control say? We'll know in 38 minutes. How big is it? 224 billion tons. It's going to pass within one kilometer. Sounds like a course correction to me. Let's just see what Control say. The closest approach is 10 kilometers. That's a completely reliable figure. Why the discrepancy? Peg's alarm initiated after two locks in the target. That's not enough for a reliable projection. We've based our projection on a lot more data points than they've got up there. What's the problem? This is a real stroke of luck. They get a fantastic flyby and we can steal some more science. We ought to consider the psychological effects of throwing a close flyby at them with no warning. What do you mean? They've done this a thousand times in Sims. They'll love it. We need to get back to the flight. Tell them to maintain course. Pegasus Control, we've got a no trajectory change on that alarm. Repeat, no change. I've got it. It's a binary. That explains the Doppler. How range. close is it going to pass? Main body four kilometers long, two wide, two and a half. How length. close? Ivan. One kilometer. What could they ask now? What was this ten kilometers then? They've got more data than we have. Sure, but they're not staring at it straight in the face. Have we got time to run another simulation? No. Discuss Two Just asteroids, a binary system, are on a collision course with the ship. One is enough to end the mission. Find out what happens when we return. On the approach to Jupiter, Pegasus crosses the asteroid belt over a million rocks. Two of them now heading straight for the ship. Here they come. Go out and take the paintwork. Oh. Are we insured? Let's switch the calm off for half an hour. Let them sweat for a change. 15 kilometers, five kilometers. <sighs> I'll be damned. 920 meters. Would that be a completely reliable figure? It's estimated that we know of 99% of the asteroids larger than 62 miles in diameter. Scientists have cataloged only about half of the smaller rocks, but very little is known about those the size of the two that almost ended the Pegasus mission. This flyby was just too close for comfort. Thank you for the flyby, Control. We did get a good view for you. Incroyable. 
Pearson and Lassard agree it was a C-type binary. We've named the twins Hubris and Catastrophe. Let's hope they never head your way. Airlock D is open. This far from the sun, the solar panels on Pegasus are useless. One jams, and the crew will have to release it manually. Nina Solon will make this deep spacewalk a daunting undertaking out here in the vast void of interplanetary space. It's so nice to stretch my legs. I'm starting to feel like a sardine. We need to check for micrometeorite damage. Micrometeoroids are tiny fragments of rock drifting in space. Relative to Pegasus, they travel at very high speeds, and even the small ones can cause damage to the outside of the spacecraft. I got some micrometeorite impacts from our transit through the asteroid belt. This is the last retention pin. At least. The panels will drift here in deep space orbiting the sun for millions of years to come. I feel like we're pulling the wings of a butterfly. Dead weight. They've done their job. Pegasus doesn't need them anymore. The ship can still generate enough power from its nuclear reactor. The radiation isn't as strong as the sun's, but they'll be exposed to Jupiter for a lot longer, so they'll need their magnetic shield again. But could you expand on that a little? Uh, just how dangerous is it? What can I tell you? I feel a lot better when they're on their way to Saturn. Pegasus is approaching Jupiter at 50 miles a second. To enter Jupiter's orbit, she'll slow down by turning her disk toward the planet and firing her main engines in reverse. To complete the maneuver, the ship will crash into Jupiter's upper atmosphere using the friction to slow down. The G-forces during this aero brake maneuver represent the greatest physical stress for the astronauts and form the most critical part of their training. G-suits to inflate. Slowing down to Jupiter orbit is the most stress we'll get in the whole six years. We've got a bet going for who passes out last. This centrifuge at Star City is the largest of its kind in the world and has been used for decades to train their cosmonauts, pushing them to their limits. The rotation of the end capsule makes for a particularly comfortable ride. Oh, incidentally, Tom's been disqualified. He's taught himself this nice little trick. He can faint with his eyes open. It took us a while to work out how he took 15 Gs. Pegasus, you're due to enter Jovian atmosphere two minutes from now looking at a maximum of 8G. As the ship luck, hits guys. the top of Jupiter's atmosphere, the air is light enough to move aside and flow around the spacecraft. 1G. 2G. But as they fall in deeper, the thicker air in front of the shield gets trapped and rapidly heats up. And the G count begins to rise rapidly. Rising. 4G. 